Our next guest was once considered a poster boy for the Roman Catholic Church. He was loved and admired by millions until the day pictures of him cuddling and kissing a woman in public surfaced in the tabloids. Well, he was forced to face one of the biggest decisions of his life, to follow his love for the church or his love for a woman. In his new book, Dilemma, he talks about breaking the sacred promise of celibacy as a priest and marrying the woman he loved and beginning a new life serving under uh, serving God under his own rules. Please welcome to the show, Father Albert Coutier. Well, how you doing? Oh, Father, how you doing? <laughs> Well, you're doing really well. The last time that we saw you, Father, um, you were celebrating your first wedding anniversary. That's right. And now, this time, it's a baby! That's right. She's five weeks old. Can you believe it? Congratulations. If you see bags under my eyes, it's because you don't sleep when you have a five-week-old. We know. Did you ever, <laughs> in your wildest dreams, I mean, you were doing something totally out of, uh, uh, of your, the path that you originally set for yourself. You're sharing a closet with women's shoes. You're That's changing right. diapers. You're, 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 you're living the life that many of us aspire, which is this man and wife with a child. You know what's really funny? You, you kind of get your, your head into this idea that you're always going to be on this path. Yes. And then life throws you a curve. And actually, in my heart, I always felt like I would, I would have loved from the beginning to be able to be both a priest and a married man, like priests were for thousands of years before, or I should say centuries before. Yes. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that, you know, you accept the rules of the church because you think this is the way God wants it. And then you go through a change. That's what the book Dilemma is about. It's about the change that somebody goes through. People don't know this, but 100,000 priests have left to marry. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, growing up, growing up, because I heard that you were a DJ while yeah. you were in, in high school. This is actually and, the and best listen. show. Listen, this is the best show. Thank you. Because when you're a former DJ, that music you hear backstage uh -oh. as you're coming in here, that's yeah. how, you know, this is... This is a show for a former DJ. Really. Yes, and, and so, and you know, uh, that leads me to ask you, had you been with women prior to joining the priesthood? Well, I still have blood running through my veins, so I'm not, uh, oh. you know, I'm part of humanity. Father, <laughs> Father, seriously speaking though, you know, this, this um, what, what you'd been through, I mean, I was reading the Facebook, you know, at, at wendyshow.com, people were back and forth, ba 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 I mean, your yeah. story has really um, attracted a lot of attention, and they treated you, it seems, more harshly than priests who've been in the news for touching boys or, or, or other things. You know what's really interesting? That I think the church has a culture of secrecy where some men are protected by the church because of their habits, especially if they are of a promiscuous nature or if there's some type of problem where the priest has uh, some type of addiction or situation. They kind of hide them away, take them out, remove them. But when your situation is exposed with a woman, even though she's an adult single female and you're an adult single male, it comes across as, oh, wow, you know, they, they call that a grave scandal. And that's what bothered me a little bit. I wish the church would have been a little more compassionate in coming out and speaking about my situation well, because many priests have fallen in love and have moved on. They just weren't priests on TV. You know, in, in my gotcha. situation, it was very public. Like, you know, Regina King was on here. Yes. And I know you guys don't believe her, but I don't, I, we didn't see anyone on the beach either the day we were there. Yeah. yeah. So, they, but, but you were on South Beach in Miami. Yeah. Making about, out. Yeah. And having a good time. The, <laughs> well. The original plan was to read some books. So. <laughs> read books. Well, Father, let me ask you. Uh, if you weren't discovered by a long zoom lens on the beach, would you have lived a life with your lady love in secrecy? Or would you Well, have... we did for, for some time, and that's the worst thing any human being can do. Oh. I think that that's what the dilemma is about. Yes. In other words, it would have been better had I come out before the paparazzi came out and exposed it. But the truth of the matter is that when you're in the system, and I've talked to many priests who married and they lived the same situation, you're, you're struggling between, okay, I've given my whole life to this, and now how is it that I take this other road uh, on the fork of the, you know, of the road. And that's what happened. I was in the process, actually, of speaking already to the Episcopal Bishop, of speaking to many priests who had already made that change. Gotcha. So, so this was something my, actually, my girlfriend knew that I was in the process of announcing it. So <laughs> the paparazzi, I think they, what they did was expose it in a way 
that I would have wished it would not have been exposed. But you were but on your way to doing it I was it on the process. Yeah. All right, so, you know, it's Sunday. Uh, it, church is on. She's a beautiful woman sitting in your... Because the father's been here before. I know a little bit about the story. Uh, your wife uh, was a, an attractive woman in, in your uh, parish. Mm -hmm. You're looking out. How do you make a first move to one of your parishioners? It's funny. It, it, it wasn't even a first move. It was just a connection. Like, I saw her and she saw me. And it's a connection like I never felt in my life. And I didn't believe before, by the way, in love at first sight. I used to tell people, come on, you got to get to know the person. That's superficial. That's infatuation. But love at first sight does exist. It does exist. And, uh, and, I, and I proved it. Hi, we're back with Father Albert Kutiak. One question before we go to our audience is, do you believe in divorce? Well, I think that marriage is for life. Uh -huh. But sometimes divorce happens. Yes. And so you have to deal with the reality of a person who has had to go through that terrible experience. I love it. Okay. So we have some questions from people in our audience for the father um, with, with their own dilemmas, which happens to be the title of father's book. Hi, Han. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Father Albert. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> so my father left me when I was eight years old. He completely abandoned me, did not support me, didn't come to my high school graduation, did not support me financially or emotionally throughout college. Now he's trying to come back in my life, but I'm a little torn. My younger brother always wanted a father, so he's, he's all for it. My younger sister wants nothing to do with him, so I'm torn about what I should do. I'll tell you, I'm glad that you're able to say that without breaking up, because emotionally <laughs> it's got to be very hard to be abandoned that way. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something about your father. Try not to judge him, because everybody deserves a second chance. And if he's reaching out to you, forgiveness is always better than resentment. People who live in resentment never heal. They're, they're never wrinkled. happy. They get wrinkled. <laughs> and you know what else? Uh, and, 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 and if someone's watching, like Dr. Oz and that, they can tell us maybe you, they get arthritis. They people, do. People who live with resentment. Yeah. They, they suffer greatly. So you know what? Forgiveness, love is always better. They say it's, it's, it's human to err and divine to forgive. But be cautiously optimistic. Yes. Yes. Okay. We have time, Father and everyone, for one more quick question from our audience. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Father. How are you? Uh, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> so here's my dilemma for you. Um, I have a close friend of mine, actually two friends, and she actually cheated on the guy that she was dating. Mm. And my dilemma is being the fact that they're both friends of mine. Do I say something because I don't want it coming back to me being the fact that I knew? I think you should speak to the person who is committing the error. Okay. If you are a friend and say, listen, what's going on? Because people are being hurt in that process. And if we can avoid someone getting hurt, we should be able to do everything we can to reach out to the person Absolutely. so that they know what they're doing. Thank okay. you, Father. Okay. And my answer is stay out of people's business. Yeah. Anyway, Father, now, thank you so much for being here. Thank Father you. Albert's book is called Dilemma, and it's available in bookstores everywhere right now.